All right, so now I can finally get to explaining you what I always wanted to explain you, and that is using the debug. Now, my next point is APIs. Why APIs? Well, because you use the debugger when you have some complex problems where you don't know why stuff is looking the way it is. And I don't want to show you the debugger where you create a dictionary containing two values and then you want to get a value which you never put in there. This is like, I think this way you wouldn't understand why you need the debugger. So I want to show you a quick way of how to get, for example, unknown information. And then how we can work with this unknown information using the debugger. And I really, I love explaining the debugger because it's so important and such a good thing. And so many friends of mine even who code never use it. And I can't understand how they're using it because I use it all the time. You're so much faster in your workflow and so much more professional. So please don't use Prince's debug statement and learn the debugger. It takes not a long time and it's really much worth it. Okay, so APIs. Why am I explaining APIs? What are APIs? So APIs are programming interfaces where you get information from, for example, a web server. Your browser is a visual interface for websites. So if you, with your browser, go on facebook.com or on github.com, your browser is an you interface via your browser with that page. An API is the same thing, just for code. An API is an, interfa an interface for code, which is the same no matter if you access it using Python or Java or the command line or whatever. And instead of returning a nicely run a website, what APIs return is a serialized dictionary, like in Python. So it's basically, it's called JSON because it comes from Java, but imagine it to be simply a dictionary which is written as a string. Okay, how do we access an API? Um, well, we can use, for example, the curl command. Okay, so for the homework evaluation program, which is going to be my example for the debugger, I need to call the GitHub API to see which repository is passed. Okay, and how do we access the GitHub API? This here, for example. So I can use the curl command um, with some arguments, and I want to curl this very website. This here is a so-called header, and this is because I don't provide my username and password on my browser. I have some access token, um, which I provide as a so-called header, which is simply something I give as a serialized dictionary to the um, server such that it may, for example, confirm my identity. Um, and this minus x tells me which method I'm using, so I'm using method get. I want to get information. I don't want to post information to the server or delete information from the server. I want to get information from the server. And this minus i also lets it show the header. So if I'm running this on my terminal, this is going to be run. This here is the serialized dictionary I'm getting as result. And this here is some header information. Okay, And I'm getting bad credentials because I don't want to give you my key. Um, so the GitHub server tells me, I won't tell you anything because you have bad credentials. This is so-called HTTP error 401 un unauthorized, which tells me the hex. Okay, so I said, I can use um, my, um, I can use the command line interface for this, but I can do the same thing using the Python library requests. Okay, if you want to crawl, for example, data sets, you're probably gonna use requests at some point. Okay. And I basically do it the same way. So I have a serialized dictionary with my authorization token. And then I use request.get and then the website with these headers. Okay, and then this returns me, gives me a few warnings, but it returns me response 401. Ah, but I wanted to get this part here. So why do I not have this part? How, what, what do I make of this? So I know, because I Googled it, that to get the JSON from this, so the content from this, I have to run .json. And this then returns me the same thing as my curl command line program gave me. Okay, but I wanted to get the headers too, because, so what I'm doing here is, for example, I'm having this limit, how often I can use the API here, and I can use for every 60 minutes, so there are 50 minutes left with this limit of 60 um, requests I can make. So, or rather it's the other way around, yeah. 
So my limit is 60, I have 55 remaining, and it's gonna be reset at this Unix time, which is in an hour. If I'm not in, if I'm not otherwise, I only have 60 per minute, uh, per hour, which is really not a lot. Okay, I want to get this information. How do I get this in Python? I don't know. Okay, so how do I do this? This is just the teaser for you. Um, this you don't need to see. And this is the teaser for now why I want you to use debuggers and why I want why I think debuggers are useful. Just one thing, how do I get these headers? That's my question for now showing you um, the debugger. But before I do that, I'm first gonna introduce you to PyCharm. Because PyCharm, I use the debugger in PyCharm. Yes, um, Jupyter Notebook by now also has a debugger, which is awesome and I really love it, but I only just installed it because I only just noticed because it came out in March of this year. So I'm gonna explain the PyCharm debugger in PyCharm. For that, I'm gonna explain PyCharm at first, and then I'm gonna go over and in Jupyter Lab, you basically do the same thing using this. I haven't looked at it too much. Okay, so let's start and open PyCharm. 